Yeah! Hey, everybody. Oh, yeah, wait. You're supposed to remind me. I gotta turn it down. Yeah. Um, so you can see, uh, welcome. It's Monday Movie Night. We've uh, we've taken this show on the road. <laughs> and uh, it's not just me that's here. It's, uh, it's my co-host, Brian. Because uh, we are in Atlanta today. Because I'm in Atlanta. And we thought we'd do this together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring in our third co-host, the one that holds it all together, as we say, the anchor of the ship who's holding it down back home, Miss Kimberly Thompson. How are you, Miss Kimberly? <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. I'm was it worth I'm, it me? I'm doing well. Thank was it worth it for me I not to say well. anything when you introduced me? To like do that? Uh, say that again? I didn't say anything when you were introducing that I was here with you because I forgot to open up my phone to pull up my soundboard. <laughs> so was it worth it for me not to say anything? <laughs> to have the applause? Yeah, for that one. Uh, I think it was. <laughs> so this is how tonight's okay, going to go. you two are no longer allowed to do the show together. I think it's going to be up. <laughs> I don't even know what that one was. <laughs> Can you, I don't even think anybody can even hear that. I don't even. I don't even know. This is the punch. Uh, punch one. Hmm. Ow! To the heart. That's what it is. Can you guys even hear in the comments? Can they even hear that? Yeah, in the comments, folks. Can uh, you hear this? Can you hear this? Uh, I guess it's like a fingernails on a chop. That's exactly what it is. Oh. Don't do that ever it's, again. It's like an audio game. All right, so guys, let me fill you in. It's it's Monday a movie night. So what we do on this show, other than play with the soundboard that Brian has on his phone, is we pick a movie each week. Um, last week was Brian's pick. It was My Life as a Zucchini, which had Kimberly snorting all over the place. She uh, thoroughly was not ready for that title. Um, so we all watched it this week. We can come back together tonight, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to ruin it for you if you haven't seen it. Um, then we're going to give it a score at the end of the night. Pick a new movie for next week. So, Brian, um, let's watch the trailer, and then we can let you talk about it. Let's do it. All right, let's. Uh, I got to hit up the right button. So, can you tell me a little bit about your mother? She really liked to drink beer, but her mashed potatoes were always good, and sometimes we had fun. I'm going to take you to a really nice place with other kids who have no mom or dad. This little man is Ikar. My name is Zucchini. More like a potato with that head. <laughs> Look how high it is! Give it back! Oh, yeah? <gasps> All the same. There's no one left to love us. <sighs> hey, new kid, what do you do to land in here? This girl, what's she like? She has eyes that go right through you. What if we get caught? You want to know or not? Y yeah. After my parents died, I went to live with my aunt. We are going home. No! Help! But she's just cruel. Then I won't let you go. Come on, everyone! Snowball fight! Girls versus boys! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> 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 so heavy! Let me have a try. His mom's so pretty. Maybe she's not his mom. Of that nonsense. So Brian, yeah, yeah. My life as a zucchini. Just, just, just before I get into it, just, I just want to throw up a couple comments. Just, you know, you guys keep commenting. Let us know if you're watching. If you have any questions? Just real quick. Here's one. Oh hey, Miranda. Just want to say hey, Miranda. How are you? You're, she's our Michigan friend, hey, right? Miranda. She's our Michigan friend. You're our Michigan yeah. Those with the puffy clouds and the bad roads. Also, uh, John yeah. uh, has a lot of things to say, and um, this is an interesting one. Just right off the bat. This made me need a drink. All right. <laughs> yeah, it did make you need a drink. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna save my like comments. It. So, Brian, tell us. Uh, tell us. Um. Yeah, I just want to hear you explain what my life as a zucchini is about. Oh man, 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put my cards on the table and say I really like this movie. I don't want to know that. Yet. I enjoyed it a you whole lot. You tell me what it's about. <laughs> it, it is. We need the plot of the movie. I think the plot, it, like I said, I, this sounds like I'm making the joke again. I do think the plot is pretty simple, um, but it is a weird story. It's, it, it's, a, it's about a boy uh, named Ikar who goes by the name Zucchini. We never know why he is called Zucchini. He has an absent father. It's implied that his father ran out on his family, but he n is never talked about, so I think he's probably died at some point. In his mind, in Zucchini's mind, his dad is a superhero who lives on his kite, his mom is an alcoholic, uh, an abusive alcoholic, I think is implied. Yep. Uh, Zucchini is a nine-year-old kid uh, with an abusive alcoholic mom um, who is mad at him and begins to climb the ladder to his attic bedroom, saying she's going to beat him, and he panics and slams the door closed to the attic, unintentionally murdering his mom. Yes. I and mean, that's how the movie, that's the, that's the first three minutes of the movie. Violent alcoholic mother is accidentally murdered by a child, and then the child is taken to uh, some sort of or orphanage or day like a um, social worker type like house. I couldn't tell if it was a prison. Like, was it a kid prison? Orphanage. That's what kid prisons are called. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> I thought that maybe it was like just for kids who committed crimes. Like it was like a, a kid prison, an orphanage. But I think it was a. I think it was just like a, no, a regular an orphanage. orphanage. Yeah, um, where he, you know, he learns what uh, real love and real family looks like. I mean, that's, I kind of feel like the whole movie. There's other things that happen. He's adopted by a police officer at some point, but it really is about people who haven't experienced love learning what love is actually like. I wish you had made the movie. Why? I feel like that's what it was. <laughs> I, I did not think so. Kimberly, what, what, did you, what were your thoughts on? Oh, you're going to me? Yeah, we're going to start with you. Because I... I, I, I I have some negatives. So I can throw negatives in later, but yeah, I want to hear what Kim. What yeah, let's, say? let's get Kim's take on it. Because I, um, I have I, inside baseball. I know both of your scores, so I may get to scores like way sooner in the show, depending on what you say here. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, this was not Sean, the sheep, because when <laughs> we were talking about claymation. That was what I had in my head. And then I watched this movie. Um, I I am very torn because I, I didn't like the movie, but I did like the movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the movie, but this story is very real. Mm -hmm. And it's done through claymation, but it broke. I, as a mother of a nine-year-old, I cried through the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Like cried through the whole movie. And so we'll get to our scores later, but the, I like the movie because it was, I have to say that the movie was good a little bit because it moved me to that level of emotion. Um, and to be honest, the story is kind of simple. Like there weren't these super complex, we didn't go into deep layers about these characters. It was pretty simply done, but it really, and maybe it's just the mother in me, it evoked a lot of emotion. And, um, but on the other hand, there was like, I am watching this because I am forced to watch it. So there's like these two sides. Because I probably would be a level of just like, oh, uh, just even the first five, like when he moves to that orphanage, I'm like bawling, crying. And when I realized that he's killed his mom on accident to try to like protect himself, I just lost it. Hurt. it. Like tears. Yeah. Couple and because... You know, I have like I have friends that work in the foster care system, and mm -hmm. this stuff is real. Mm -hmm. And especially the part where it talks about kids his age, they age out of the foster care system, at least, and they will never have a family. And mm -hmm. that touches on how these kids felt. And so that the the realism in that struck me, mm -hmm. and that's like the heaviness of it. I, I'll say this: I did not like how I feel felt after I watched this movie. I felt really heavy and depressed interesting so that's the part that i really didn't like but um as a movie and it, you know movies are there to tell a story and to evoke this emotion and unfortunately it did that in me it really evoked a lot of emotion yeah i got like i worked for a year in the um 
uh, as, a, as a primary counselor for adjudicated youth at a residential therapy center. So a place similar to this, kids who were in prison, essentially. North Beach. No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and it, it, it was, I've had that conversation that like, you, you, you may not ever have a family and that is a hard conversation. Here's a couple comments though, uh, just for fun, because I got the comment sections. Yep. John says, yeah, pretty simple, Brian. Yeah, it's, <laughs> It's actually, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to come back to that in a sec. Here's uh, Diana's. Very dark, although it did have a happy ending for two of the students. Still very dark. And then, uh, oh, hold on. This is a cancel. There you go. Josh, Josh Williams now says, <laughs> after watching that, who wants a beer? Uh, I think you and John need to watch it. All right, Kim, here you go. This is for you, too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, John. I think that um, it's interesting that you, you felt you didn't like the way you felt at the end. Uh, no, because I'll say this: there were a few parts. It was clearly a foreign movie because culturally there was some mm -hmm. weird stuff that happened in it. Uh, the teachers making out in the back of the car and all the people watching it. That picture that that one kid drew. The penis um, exploded. Naked, yeah, <laughs> <naked adults>. um, <laughs> the other thing was I couldn't. I joked about this last week on the post show, but it to me. I thought about like could I could my kids watch this movie and I kind of would be okay with them watching it because it's real and it and it's still kids being kids. They need the talk before they watch this movie so they don't pick up any ideas. The animation though is terrifying to me. There are moments and there's there's that scene in the trailer where where uh, they're all at like a snow day and they see a mom and her kid and it's a loving mom with a kid. And it, and it cuts them and it plays, it has like a horror movie sting behind them. And they're all standing there with those big dead eyes and weirdly long arms. And it's like, it's awkward. You can tell. And I was like, is this going to take a turn? Like I could have seen the movie going real dark in that moment. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, oh, that was, I'm afraid if my kids watched it, the visuals of it would give them nightmares. All right. So I've, I've given you, I've given you both 12 minutes to talk about this film. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> I absolutely hated it. There was not a single thing I liked about it. I hated it so much. It was a stupid French film that should have <laughs> never been made, and it won awards because it was French. Oh, yeah. It's stupid. If you took and made like the Charlie Brown Christmas version of Instant Family, it would have been way better than this. Mm. Like it was just terrible. Oh, yeah, totally. Like it was just terrible. I didn't, I didn't like the story. I don't like the dead emotions. N Nick Offerman's voice never got above a two. Like, I, like if I was in a vocal booth and I was like, "All right, we're gonna voice this," I would have never let them listen to the French part if that's how all the stuff was gonna come out. Because it just, it, it was, it was an emotionless delivery with emotionless characters for a super heavy topic. Yeah, and I did, I hated it. I wonder, I, the, the cast, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> That's right. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I did not like it at all. The cast, I think, is interesting because it was, yeah, a, it was, it was, a, it was a crazy cast. Dick Offerman, um, Will Forte, uh, uh, Ellen Page was in such a small mm -hmm. role yeah, for the movie. Yeah. Um, uh, Amy Sedaris was in it, uh, and I wonder if it was like a, f it, it felt like a like a like a favor for a friend, right? Because those are all comedic <laughs> yeah, actors it, it, who are pulled it, in. Yeah, there's no way, there's no way you're pulling that kind of talent. Um, it just, it was just, it was terrible. Uh, what what do we got? What's comments? Brian's comment, Lord. Uh, 30 minutes more of TJ saying these things, please. <laughs> yes, I can I can continue uh, for quite a long time. Fun too. Um, I kept seeing Conan O'Brien when I looked at the little redhead. Oh, man. Speaking of the little redhead kid. The bully. Is, he was the bully. He was the bully. And this is what I mean by terrible French. Is there is a scene where he gets mad and goes and listens to metal music. Oh, man. But it's so French, it's not even angry. If like, there is... <laughs> Yeah, my, my biggest complaint about the movie is the music is horrible. So bad. Mm -hmm. I wish, dang it, I gotta figure out how to get clips, man. Because I wish, if if you haven't seen the movie, figure it out. You can go on Amazon and just watch, listen to the music the kids are dancing to in that dance scene. Weird French music. Weird music. Weird French yeah, music. The whole, that scene was weird. I was like, 
what is happening here. I'm a, I'm a, but here's my thing. I'm a big fan of redemption. In fact, we talk about how I don't, I don't like the crazy dark dramas. Mm-hmm. I don't like redemptionless stories. And I liked that there was this huge redemption arc. And that little bully kid, the Conan O'Brien kid that Diana's talking about, at one point he's talking to Zucchini and he has this conversation. We're all here for the same reason because there's no one left to love us. Yeah. And I, and that will always get me, man. And the fact that even though they all felt like there was no one left to love them, there was this family that was found and formed around them. And that's what I think maybe, Kim, you and I like connected to. Yeah. And like, and going back, TJ, you talk about how like there was emotionless, like in the way that these lines were delivered or presented. Yep. I think that made it even more like steep. Like it. I feel like the kids had a ton of emotion. Be- because, okay, like for um, the police officer's character, I feel like he was meant to be steady because he was a steady guy in, in Zucchini's life. Like, He's calming. He's supposed to be like this calm figure that brings stability to him. There's no then, one on the like, there's no there's one on like the planet a, that's a, in a coat and has water balloons dropped on him and goes, Ooh. <laughs> and then they do it again and he goes, Ooh. I'll get you. Uh, uh, uh. They, uh, okay, his mother was abusive. And, so and what it's would like, that look like if he freaked out and like and yelled like, and screamed? That's true. They don't like police officers. No, Zucchini Ooh. had a ton of energy. I think that uh, the uh, my favorite part of Nick Offerman was his little laugh. They don't like police officers. Yeah, <laughs> round circle. Yeah, I don't like how the clay- claymation and how they made them look. That was Uh-oh. visually well, visually this wasn't pleasing. So I no, it was visually. I liked it. I liked the way it looked, but it was. <laughs> what is that? I think that's Georgia. Is that the dogs? That's- Georgia. Wow. Georgia says she does not like my life with zucchini. I like the way it looks, but it, it is all it is unsettling. Like it's, I think it's intentionally unsettling. Um, but not in a good like Nightmare Before Christmas way. That's the whole thing. Oh, about I felt this, is it's not it's not in a good way. Their noses are distracting. Their ears are distracting. <laughs> the little red I don't noses. mind them all. The, the, their coloring of like the red ears. And I liked the red it. Nose. Real quick, just to put my, myself on the board. <sighs> I agree, Brian. Yeah. Yep. They were a fan. No one's... Okay. All right. I, I can continue hating on this movie. Let me tell you what would make it better. Let me give you a compliment sandwich for, so, of sorts. If you had given this script to Pixar, oh, they would yeah. have said, we've got a two-minute short, and it'll be awesome. And it would have been great. It was not an hour oh. film. No way. I, I think Pixar could have it, done great. It opens up. Opens up, kite, mom coming up, boom, she's dead. Family meets girl, off to the, with the cop. The end, done. And you're like crying in two minutes. No, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, the weight of what they were trying to get across has to settle. Like, you have to let it sit on you. Who for does a while. it settle with? Like, it's emotionless. Care. They never, like, it never, like, settles. You never see it, like, hmm. It feels awkward, I'm much and it better makes now. You think about, like, there's an awkwardness to the story. Like, yeah, there is. There's an awkwardness to the story. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna we're show and, Georgia. <laughs> she's, she's not like what we're saying right now. Um, there's an awkwardness in the story. And, <laughs> uh, Get her, Georgia. Get her. <laughs> are you on the side? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, what was I saying? Awkward to story. To the story. And I think like letting that sit, like it builds through the movie. And I'm sorry, like I I had to take myself out of looking because visually I don't find the story very pleasing at all. But because I've what they were saying is so truthful and really happens that I could like my heart's breaking because I'm thinking there's really kids sitting somewhere that are experiencing this exact same thing. Uh sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And yes. There are kids experiencing that, and there are way better people equipped to tell their stories. I think that I think the unsettled. Yes, I mean, I'm not going to agree with you. Like, if Pe- if Pixel did like an, um, you know, I don't think a short would work. Pixel. I think it could have been longer. I think that I think, that the, I think the unsettling, the, the unsettledness, the unsettledness, the unsettledness. Y'all, you, this movie it invoked a completely different emotion out of y'all than me, which is weird because yeah. normally I would pick up on most of these things, but I did not. My thought though is all that the, the way they looked, the the fact that it was strange, and the fact that it was there were because t- I would say there's a bunch of emotion. I didn't feel like it was deadpan at all. Uh, Nick Offerman might have been, except for his cute little giggles that he would do every now and then. Um, 
But I think all of it was the because like, how do you cope? How do you cope if that's your life? Your dad ran off. Your mom was an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. You beat you. You accidentally murdered her. You, you, you're in this house full of misfits. Like you, you feel hopeless and, and futureless, but you're too young to even know that. And it just feels wrong. And I think that was the feeling that I thought the movie had was it just everything mm-hmm. felt just wrong. Well, maybe that's why people bought into this movie is because they watched it and they got done and heard a lecture by the filmmakers that filled in all the <laughs> missing pieces and emotion that they didn't put in their film. I didn't listen to a lecture, man. Maybe right. you're just heartless, TJ. Hey, speaking of, because TJ got, uh, he was right. Kim got one that said she was right. I got one that said I was right. But also, our friend Georgia did too. <laughs> Georgia is agreeing with Kim. <laughs> I don't know. That's a if you know Georgia, that's not an agreeable noise. <laughs> that is a horribly disagreeable noise. I I yeah, I Oh gosh. <laughs> Here's a comment. I just saw John's comment. <laughs> uh you cope with it by drinking more than his mom. <laughs> You know, man. <sighs> you gotta break the cycle, dude. That's what it was. It was, a, it was unconditional love that broke a cycle of pain and, and heartbreak. Yeah, but, dude. Even yes, and that. him, his line of saying that, like, like he envisioned him being just like his mom. Yeah, I could like, have. This is where I was going. I mean, that was a weird way. To, like, that's that that's truth. I mean, there's kids that they're in this this cycle of like where they're raised by alcoholics and there's abuse and, um, yeah, and um, you know, they go on to do the same thing to their kids. And so for like, you know, I, that I, I don't know. Emotionally, I'm just. This is how this is how bad the storytelling was. <laughs> is that I didn't realize till the redheaded boy went to the that the rainy sunny thing that that wasn't a days of the week weather calendar. That was how you felt. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, that's like if, how you felt. Come on now. No, it, like I didn't realize that till the redhead guy went. But to that's because we can't we can't read French. Like if we were just because it's bad said, storytelling. Is it French? If you could have read what no, it said, that the kids' that. feelings. I got that right away. No, because I should have known that that I should have been emotionally connected to that when the girl did it the first time. Mm. And instead, I was like, "Oh, she's pranking everybody again and making it all like sunny days or rainy days." And I was like, "Oh, it's like one of those school weather calendars." Yeah. And then when the redheaded guy did it, I was like, "Oh, it's a mood." Thing? Yeah, it took. I I didn't get it either. It took me a second to figure it out. Yeah. And I, I I went buying it. And the, the redheaded bully was like super stereotypical, mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. come on. And who just eats French fries? Oh man, with with French fries. Well, the they have French carrots and peas. That one day, <laughs> the French eat French fries French. with a fork. Freedom fries. <laughs> that was their whole meal. Just sitting down at the table with their forks, <laughs> eating their French fries. And they went on a hunger strike. I I don't know, man. It was I did not like this film at all. I will uh, I'll save it for my clothes. Someone who was it? John. What's his name? John. What's his name? Was our friend who was who shows up every now and then is real vocal. Gotcha. Who asked that us, guy? Yeah, he asked us how do why why do we pick the movies that we picked? And I've thought about this a whole bunch, and here's I couldn't think of a good answer, but I got one now. I like I like media stories and films and stuff that are acquired tastes. Like I like finding something that I have to learn how to like, and this is a hundred percent one of a, those kinds of movies where like I had to I had to be like all right. You're gonna learn to love what's happening, and I liked it. <laughs> but it's it's like a really expensive, nasty acquired taste. <laughs> yeah, like coffee. I mean, no, I don't like, like coffee, but escargot. All right, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like there's a very small group of people that's gonna eat escargot. You sincere- that's gonna order escargot. There's way more people that have acquired a taste for Bud Light. Yeah, so it's like I'm in the group that would order escargot. Kim, you sincerely like it? Like you enjoy it? Because I, I do. do not. I like it. Tastes like salty butter. All right. So, um, yeah, scores, man. I'm going to do scores. So, I'm going to start. This is going to be wild. I'm going to start. I'll go, can I go. I'm going to go last. You go last. Okay. It's your movie. You can go last. I hated this movie. <laughs> I did not like it. I wanted to like it, but I didn't. No, I didn't even want to like it. <laughs> When I got into it, I was like, what a pompous movie. <laughs> like, I just, I hated everything about it. It was even shot really too sharp. They shot it on a 5D. I like, I, I just didn't even like that. I could tell when they were chroma key in backgrounds. 
I hated the animation of the characters. There were missing frames in the animation. Like there was nothing from a cinematic side for me to like. There was definitely nothing from an acting side for me to like. I hated all of the voiceover deliveries. If I was in a vocal booth doing that, I would have been flipping out if there was a director saying that was the one. Or <laughs> I'd be like, bro, it sounds like he's just warming up vocal cords. He's not even started yet. Um, I I just didn't like the music was terrible. The, the the like the weird Frenchness of it. I, I can just see people being like, oh, I love the weird Frenchness. I will vote for this film to be amazing. There's no French, there's no bad French movies. Um, I I did not like it. And so with that being said, I gave it a 40. Whoa, man. 40. Yeah. Hold yeah. on, just I'm throw some comments up again because these are uh these That's are interesting more ones. Than the butcher one. Yep, I yep. Had a few beers to go to the attic. Wish me luck. <laughs> Which uh, was you responded to horrible. with this. Uh, watch yourself, Josh. Uh, uh, Diana <laughs> is all on TJ's side. Yeah, don't hold back. I'm not. And then uh, John at it again. <laughs> this movie was probably pretty good if you had a rough childhood. <laughs> that makes it worse right there. That was. I, I feel like that would make it worse. Yeah, I, I you know. Um, oh, crap, Kim. We got another. We got some more hate coming our way from John. Yeah. For everyone else, two thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah, I you know most of the I, I I'll say up until this point like most of the movies we've watched like I haven't honestly been like this was bad like even Magnificent Butcher there was like shining moments in it oh yeah yeah um, even in the was bad. even in the hustle like it wasn't too bad I mean I I, I got through it that like the one last night with it, oh it, I watched it last night or and partly this morning but it was just bad. It was just so bad. I I did not enjoy it at all <laughs> and. Yeah, so Kim, let's. Uh, so I give it a forty. Um, what do you? Uh, what do you give it, Kim? Okay, um, I want to set up my score first. I, I got to do the same thing. I have, I have two different, um, two different trains of thoughts here. So on one hand, I there's part of me that did not like this movie. I didn't like visually how it looked. Um, like, I agree with everything TJ said. Um, but on the other hand, this movie evoked more emotion in me than I've had in a long time. And I think it was because it was super simple, but the realism side of it, of, of knowing that there's children out there going through this, and there was, with that came like this heavy weight. And so from a storyteller's point of view, I have to give credit where credit is due. And as a storyteller, you're, you want to, you want to provoke <laughs> emotion you want those people to get on your side you, I'm, you want those people to feel the point that you're trying to get across and i felt that so with that being said i had to give credit where credit was due so i gave it a 75 oh snap the emotion and the amount of like heaviness and weight that i felt and where I want to run to an orphanage and hug kids and tell them that they are like, literally, I was like, I want to make more of a difference in the world and help lost children like this. So I feel like with that, it this deserves probably a higher score than I would really normally give it. I'm very torn. I like it. Interesting. I got a comment I'm going to put up in a little while because uh, it's my turn, right? I, I agree. I think you should hold that comment and then we can all poke holes in it <laughs> or at least me <laughs> all right because I, I here's what I, like i said earlier i like acquired taste uh content like i i'm and i feel like i've learned that from this well, how many episodes 12 11 11, 11 episodes of this, 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 this show thing now i don't have any balloons for today that's all right uh so i thought that um being a kid is hard like it is a difficult thing uh to feel powerless and to not even have the ability to understand why you feel the way you feel um, just in general, uh, and then to have a life of trauma like all the kids in the orphanage did, um, it, like it, to to be put in that place as a thirty five year old would be the end. Like my, I, it, like I couldn't recover from it, and I think there is something powerful and something beautiful in that uh, that the redemptive arc that those those kids could all experience. Even though, as far as I know, in the storyline, only two of them were adopted and became part of a family, um, like a you know a 
traditional family. There's just this, this group, this gathering, this connectivity that happened between all of them. And man, for me, I got hit home hard. Like I, I feel like I, I got it right away. Um, I, I feel like all the decisions, I didn't, I didn't notice um, a lot of the stuff that you're talking about with, you know, um, frame skipping and stuff like that. But I, part of me feels like it's all intentional to, to give you that uncomfortable feeling. And so when there was this family moment at the end, to me, I, like I was almost opposite to Kim. Like I, I left that movie more positive than I was coming in. Um, I thought that all the art decision was intentional to, to, to push this one point of what it feels like to be a kid who experienced, like this, that's what it is. This movie is, is the closest thing I can imagine to what it feels like to experience trauma. It's like a, just a, a sliver, a taste of that trauma. And I, and I got it. I feel like it connected well with me. So uh, I gave it an 83. I thought it was phenomenal. <laughs> Uh, of the of all the movies that we've done, um, this one's up there uh, up there for me. Uh, and now here's a, a question uh, from uh, one of our friends, Mr. Andy Cox. And uh, Andy wrote, "Why do you think this got a 99 percent on Rotten Tomatoes? And did you just fact check? Is that correct? Yeah, it does have that. I saw that. 99. I saw it the other day on yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, uh, we hey, can Brian? fact check it. Hey, yeah." Brian? TJ's movie from last week had zero percent for Rotten Tomatoes. Whoa, that's right, it did. Yeah, we were way off on that one. Yeah, yeah, nine nine. I I don't know, man. I think that seven out of ten on IMDb is more accurate than the ninety nine on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, that's still um, pretty high. I think it, I think that there's a part of it in, in Rotten Tomatoes because I haven't seen. I'm guessing that's audience, and not just critics, right? I don't know. I don't know. You click on the seat and find out. Um, I think there is some of it that is a uh, uh, foreign language film. Like if you kind of feel like it's better. 88 though for audience mm -hmm. scores. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's like the quote unquote, like reviewers, mm -hmm. like the people who know movies. And I would like to take a stab at that. It's because it's French. <laughs> that's, that's it. Like, tell me your answer yeah. to everything. It's because it's French, man. Like I'm telling you right now, there's never been a movie that anyone in France made that they thought was bad. And like, if you look at like any of like the indie film circuits, any French movie always kind of like rises up. It usually gets cut out in, in like later times. But like, that's exactly what happened here, I'm sure, was it was, it was a moderately successful film in France. And they were like, oh man, if we only had the best guys to dub this in English, it would just explode. Yeah. And uh, it's terrible. And it didn't explode, and it did terrible. It didn't make any money. Uh, it lost money, um, and so it can take its Rotten Tomato score and try to deposit <laughs> that in the bank, while Kevin James <laughs> makes assassin <laughs> movies with a zero on Rotten Tomatoes and like quadruples their investment. So um, I think here's here's my answer, Andy. I think that uh, I think it is a it is a it is a one of a kind story in, in film. Like there, it's a storyline that we haven't seen before. It's a it's an animation style that you haven't seen before. We, when when have you seen a movie about a nine year old who accidentally murders his mom and then finds family with a police officer who drives into an orphanage? I feel like kids in an orphanage and finding family has been like a story told a thousand times. I don't know, man. I think the try. Have you ever heard of wait. Peter Pan? Hey, yeah, he doesn't find family in an orphanage. They he, start in an orphanage. Who starts That's an orphanage? That's where Hook comes and steals the kids from. Isn't that where he steals them from the book? No. Well, maybe, maybe his mom. He, he His mom, when he was a baby, said he was going to grow up to be an adult, and he decided he as a child. Away. That's right. Yeah, he never wanted to grow up. Uh... I think uh, that's what I think. I think it's a unique story, and I think it accomplishes. What are you about? That where they steal the kids out of the orphanage? Oh, you know what? You're right. That was that Pan. Pan. Yeah, where they jumped down on the bungee cord and. <laughs> I bet Pan made more money. <laughs> no <laughs> way. Movie, no way. Because Pan is a garbage movie. <laughs> I, bet I would recommend Pan over this. No movie. way, Andy. Here's here's what it is. <laughs> It was uh, it was a very specific story in a very specific field that they were trying to communicate, and I think they nailed it. That's what I think, Kim. What do you think, Kim? I, you know? I mean, you guys know where I am. <laughs> I I I am split. Like I'm just so. I don't. To be honest, I don't. I wouldn't recommend this movie, Brian. I wouldn't tell them to go watch it because I don't really like how I feel. But I refuse to watch what's. What's the movie, TJ, that you told me to watch? Joker? No. Mm. Because mm. it's like the psychological mm. thriller, and I don't like feeling like I know that's going to get in my head, and I'm going to be like jacked up for the rest of the day. Joker like, is a movie like that generally invokes emotion. 
Uh, here's a here's another comment, just fun uh, from our friend Diana. She said, um, "I don't want to see another one." <laughs> <laughs> I think she doesn't want to see another movie about children who accidentally murder their parents, but find redemption in family and orphanage. I'm assuming that's what that means. Yeah, I guess so. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. If Andy, if you haven't seen Instant Family, go watch that one because we all agreed that that was a really good movie. Yeah, that was a good. I mean, and it's uh, it it accomplishes the same thing without. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. It didn't make you feel sad for all the other high school kids who got left on that step. It, or that they became a family. It did. It, it did, 100%, but not the same way as you can. I also have a question. The guy. <laughs> we cost $150 million. Wow. Oh, what did? That's pan. Pan is garbage, y'all. <laughs> it cost $150 million. <laughs> that's insane. The Kevin James movie was $40 million and we thought that was a bunch. That was in 2015, too. Mm-hmm. What was your question? Um, one answer, like the one thing I thought was weird, I felt bad, but for the kids left on the set, but I also felt bad for the police officer's actual son. Yeah. Did you guys? Yeah, like, that was a weird side story. Two other kids. Why are you not seeing your real son? Mm-hmm. Like, before, well, because he's in a bedroom full of cactuses, and, and that no one is to live in that type of environment. That's no, weird. No, uh, no home. Uh, what are those people called? Studies. Home study people would oh, have yeah. gone into the house and been like, "This is not suitable nope, for small children." Mind. The room full of cactuses. <laughs> <laughs> this is your bedroom, by the way. You're just sleeping in the room full of cactuses. <laughs> don't fall out of that bed. You don't seem like a murderer. You just seem <laughs> French. All right. <laughs> yeah. If I, walk, if I walked into your house and you were like, "Here's my kid's nursery," and it was littered with cactuses, cacti, it would be. Uh, yeah, I'd be real cautious. The trustworthy meter would not be high. Call somebody about it. All right, hold on. I um I didn't put up the leaderboard because I'm slacking. So uh, here was the um scoreboard uh, as we stand. Even with my 40, Brian, you went ahead of Kimberly. Oh snap! Yeah, 69. What? Now that's Kim- because of my 75 helped you out. That's true, but you were just being honest. That was a good score. I mean. If anything, I played the part of the Kimberly tonight mm-hmm. by tanking that score um, with that 40. But I think it was well-deserved. <laughs> if someone showed up with a paper that was like that movie in terms of all the other papers I've seen, I've been like, no. <laughs> like, this was a, like, this wasn't even a good Cliff Notes effort. Like, it was... You I don't didn't feel like, like it. this movie was a better story and it wasn't told better than Where Did You Go, Bernadette? I guess there was so many other redeeming things in Where'd You Go, Bernadette, that... It was visually pretty. Like, yes. Where'd You Go, Bernadette yeah. had some visual... Like, it was, it, it, it was visually pretty. The, um, like, the acting side of that, though, like, I got behind characters in that. And the yeah. only thing in that was just the story sucked. And honestly, I think it's because they adapted it. Mm-hmm. Like, if it... if I think if you go and read that book, it's probably amazing. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, no, this one was terrible. They got no excuses. <laughs> and then <laughs> before we leave, did anyone Google, because I didn't find this out. I didn't know if Kim did. Does zucchini mean anything in French that didn't translate? Oh, I don't, I don't think so. We, we like, did. What was the like? What was the original title? Uh, if you if because we, we watched the French trailer earlier. But if you remember at the end when he goes to his bedroom and there's a sign on the door and there it's how oh man was the word? Cocorette. Oh. It's the French word for zucchini. Yeah. It is the French word for zucchini? Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't know if there was any significance behind, like a double entange in French. Yeah, I feel like there's probably something that we are missing. Like, why Why did his mom call him a zucchini? zucchini. Yeah. Man, you can't, listen, the heartbreak, just, just to keep going back, the heartbreak of the moment where he hides his kite of his dad and his, his dad's chicks on it, and then it, and it, the one lone and the beer, beer can... can Oh my goodness! And that was all of his possessions. That's all he had. I know. Yeah, it got me, man. It didn't get me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I went and made like chocolate chocolate chip cookies after I watched this movie to make myself feel better. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully fun. next week's movie is gonna be better. Let's see what it is. <laughs> I'm done talking about this one because it was terrible. <laughs> um, uh, the pick for next week's movie, uh, it's Kim's pick. Uh, Kimberly chose the next. Three days. So. With Russell Crowe. 
Is it evil? <laughs> I, I forgot about my soundboard, <laughs> and that just movie. that just says laughter, Ooh, and that was a, that was a creepy laugh. That was dark. Hey. Is it pause again? Hopefully, this one's a little more lighthearted. <laughs> that one went on for a while. Um, all right, so the next three days will be the movie um, we'll watch next week, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if it is. Um, I don't know. Metal. That was like the metal sign back in the day. The uh, rev. Yeah, I accidentally hit the Harley button. <laughs> we'll see if it's Harley worthy. Oh, it's it's a uh, Prime. That's on Amazon Prime. It's Kim's pick. Kim, do you want to say anything about it? You said it was an action um, movie? It's a suspense action movie. It has Russell Crowe. I think it's from like 2010. So it's okay. an older movie, but... Well, maybe it's good. We'll find out if it's Harley-worthy next week on Monday Movie Night. Uh,